So here's our second part of genetic variability. So in the first part, we learned that genetic variability can occur by crossing over during meiosis to create those four genetically different gametes. So building on that, in that video, we talked about genes and alleles. And so now we're going to go into more depth about what exactly are alleles. So as you go through this video, you're going to be prompted to answer some questions on the screen. And you're also going to write those questions and answer them in your notebook. And so there it will be a specified page given to you, or it may be written on the whiteboard. So take a look at the whiteboard for which page you should record this. And then at the end of the video, there will be the complete chart and you will record that in your notebook as well. So just a reminder by genetic variability, genetics means the science of heredity, so how traits are passed on from one person to the next. And by variability, we mean that there are variations, there are differences between all organisms to make all organisms different. And it occurs by crossing over, which was our first video, genes and alleles, which is this video, and then mutations, which is our next video. So some examples of how we can see genetics in different people. So with genes and alleles, here is our lovely cell, our cell membrane. Inside our cell, we're going to find chromosomes. So I made these chromosomes a little bit fatter so that we can see these two alleles here. So these are the same gene. Noca Notice that they are located on the same part of the chromosome. And this gene will code for eye color. So here we have our two chromosomes. Both of them are coding for eye color. However, notice that they're different colors. We have a brown one over here because this one will code for eye color, same gene, but it's going to code for the brown eye color. Whereas this gene over here also codes for eye color, but it's going to code for blue eye color. Because they're the same gene, but they code for different colors, they are known as alleles. And so an allele is an alternate form of a gene for a trait. Remember, another name for trait is a phenotype. And so here we see the gene for eye color that will result in different traits, brown eye color and blue eye color. Alleles can either be dominant or recessive. By dominant, we mean that it will be fully expressed in an organism's phenotype. So again, phenotype meaning trait. And so, for example, brown eyes, if somebody has the allele for brown eyes, they're going to have brown eyes. To represent this on paper, because we're going to be doing some practice crossing different traits together, we need to represent that with a letter to make it easy. And so that symbol representation is called a genotype. And with a dominant genotype, it's represented by any capital letter. So you can choose any capital letter. For example, it could be capital A, capital H, capital R, whatever. If you're ever asked to choose your own genotype letter, it's best to choose a letter that you can easily recognize from the uppercase and the lowercase. So for example, an uppercase A is very different than the lowercase A. However, an uppercase O is pretty much identical to a lowercase O. So we can stay away from letters like O and S and C, which are all pretty much the same. For recessive, by recessive, we mean that it may not be fully expressed in an organism's phenotype. If the dominant allele is put with a recessive allele, the dominant allele is always going to be shown. This doesn't mean that dominant means stronger. It just means it's going to show up. And so recessive does not mean that it's weaker. It just means that it is 
going to be kind of masked over, but it's still there. And so if a person has all recessive alleles, they're going to have a recessive trait, such as blue eyes. Blue eyes is recessive. And so a person with blue eyes has all or most alleles for the blue eye color. If they had anything for brown, they're going to have brown eye color. For a recessive genotype, that's going to be re represented by any lowercase letter. So example, a little b, a little f, or a little t. So a little bit more talk about genotypes. If we have a genotype that's represented capital B, capital B, this is what we call homozygous dominant, where homo means same. And it's dominant because both of our letters here are capital letters, meaning this genotype will represent a dominant phenotype. And so each of these represents an allele, and there is one dominant allele from each parent. So the allele given from parent one is a capital B, so they gave a brown eye color allele. And the allele from parent two is also capital B, so they also gave a brown eye color allele, which means that the child has this genotype, and they're going to have brown eyes. Whereas we could have a genotype that is a capital B and a lowercase b. Because they're not the same, they are different, meaning heterozygous. And so hetero means different. And so in this case, there is one dominant allele given from one parent. It could be given from the mom or the dad. And there's also one recessive allele given from the other parent, either the mom or the dad. And when there's a heterozygous genotype, it will show and express the dominant phenotype. So in this case, we have a capital B for brown eyes and a little b for blue eyes. But this person that has the heterozygous genotype will show and express brown eyes. The last one that we'll see is if we have two lowercase letters. And that means homozygous recessive. Again, where homo means the same, and they're both showing recessive genotype. In this case, there is one recessive allele from each parent. So parent one gave a recessive allele, maybe for blue eyes, and parent two also gave an allele for blue eyes. And so in this case, this child that has the genotype little b, little b, will have blue eyes. So that is our complete chart. So as you can see here, we started talking about the cell with chromosomes like we already knew, and then we added to it. Here we have genes, but they're different, slightly different genes, coding for a different eye color, and so they're called alleles. Those alleles can either be dominant or recessive. So showing a phenotype that is dominant could be an example of brown eyes or showing a phenotype that's recessive could be blue eyes. The dominant genotype is represented by a capital letter. The recessive genotype is represented by a little letter. And then we have examples of homozygous and heterozygous. So in your notebook, sorry, in your notebook, you will record this chart. This is our final notes chart. To help you out, I have some practice assignments, and so I'm going to go through an example of each question from that worksheet. So, first off, here are some vocabulary words, and you're going to use the word bank over here to choose which one is best. So, for example, if our 
question was these alleles are the same, go ahead and choose which word from our word bank would be best. So remember that the same means homo, and so we're looking for one that's homozygous. And so the answer is homozygous slash pure. And so another way to say homozygous, because homo means same, would be pure. And notice that with heterozygous, hetero means different, which means that could be a hybrid. Next example. For each of these genotypes, indicate whether it's heterozygous or homozygous. So if we have a capital E with a little e, go ahead and choose if it's going to be heterozygous or homozygous. The correct answer here would be heterozygous because these letters are different. There's one capital and one lowercase. Next, for each of the genotypes below, determine the phenotype. So if we have purple flowers that are dominant to white flowers, meaning purple is dominant and white is recessive, if I have two lowercase p's, what would be their phenotype? So the correct answer would be the phenotype would be white because both of these are showing a recessive genotype, which means we're going to have the recessive phenotype. So for each of the phenotypes, list the genotypes. And you're just going to choose whichever letter you think would be best. So if we're talking about straight hair that's dominant to curly hair, meaning curly hair is recessive, I'm going to go ahead and use an H to represent the genotypes here. And so if I have straight hair, one, go ahead and choose what type of genotype it would have. There could be two correct answers here. That's why we have two straights written here. And so one could be either homozygous dominant, where it's two capital H's, or the other could be heterozygous with one capital H and one lowercase h. The last thing is that you're going to use this large data table to write the corresponding genotype. So there's a whole list of different phenotypes here, and you're going to write the matching genotype. So let's practice with homozygous tall. So homozygous tall, that's the stem height here, and it's represented by a capital T because the short is a little t. Go ahead and choose the best genotype for homozygous. So remember with homozygous, we mean the same, and so because it's the same, it's going to have two capital T's. If the plant were only tall and it did not say homozygous, then we could either have a homozygous genotype of two capital T's, or we could have a heterozygous genotype with a capital T and a lowercase t. The other activity that we're going to do is an in-class activity where you are going to go around and talk to at least 10 classmates and tally mark what kind of trait they have. And so you're going to be given this data table that shows dominant and recessive traits. And so if they have the dominant trait, you're going to put a tally mark here. If they have the recessive trait, you're going to put the tally mark here. Let me give you some examples of what these things look like. So somebody who can roll their tongue is going to look like this. Somebody who cannot roll their tongue, it's pretty much like they're just sticking their tongue out. They have trouble there. By hitchhiker's thumb, we mean that the thumb is bent over compared to a thumb that is straight. A widow's peak has this little pointed thing, kind of like Dracula, whereas the straight hairline will be just straight across. Dimples, we're going to see these little dimples here in the cheeks versus no dimples. Somebody with six fingers is actually dominant over somebody who has five fingers, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Here is an attached earlobe versus an unattached earlobe. Straight hair versus curly hair. Freckles versus no freckles. And fused digits. Fused digits means that the fingers or the toes are webbed together versus normal digits where they are not webbed together. 
and so you're going to go around and talk to at least 10 classmates to find out what traits they have.